I can't help myself. I did that build and video a few months ago of the Wolf Manor. As I was creating that build and video, I was also coming up with other ideas similar to that concept of an animal morphed into a building. Now I have a lot of concepts that I want to see to realization, so this might take a while. Hope you enjoy this next addition to whatever series this is. As always, it started from a simple sketch. This concept, as you can see, is just another building, but in the shape of an eagle. And just like with any build you would do for anything, the first step is to just get a basic wireframe down so I can determine scale and basic shapes. I started off with a very rough wireframe. I didn't do any measurements of any kind. Later on though, I did have to adjust things to be a little more symmetrical in some areas just to make things easier for myself. But in the beginning, it was very rough and I was just trying to get a general idea. In comparison to the previous build, I think the design for this build has much more prominent animal features with the head being the main focus of the build. So I wanted to make sure that was wireframed to be more accurate to the proportions of an actual eagle. The trick is finding a nice mix of organic and geometric shapes to make it believable that this is part of the building. Once the size and shape of the head are determined, I then go through the rest of the structure and try to map that out. One thing I did notice was I was going a lot bigger on this build than the last one. It ended up being around 276 blocks tall, which didn't leave me with much extra room build height wise, but for the composition I had in mind, it worked out okay. You do have to think about your overall composition as soon as you start building, because that's really what helps you determine how large or small to make something. Me personally, I like to utilize my build height to its fullest, so a lot of my stuff ends up being very large as a result of that. However, if you don't care as much about utilizing the entire space, but let's say you just have a lot of components you want to stack into a scene. You do need to consider how each piece is going to fit together, how it's going to affect the overall composition, and all that good stuff. If you're building player scale, you probably don't think about it that much, but if you're going to get into the mega builds, it's definitely more to consider if you're limiting yourself like I do to the natural block height. Now that I have a rough head shape going on, I'm gonna start by filling in the eye because as you know, eyes bring life to a build. Not only that, but it's very important for me to determine the eye placement this early on because it does affect a lot of the wireframing. And the eye placement on this particular build was a bit different. It had to be on an angle so that it could be viewed from the front or from the side because eagles do have a very wide field of view. Did you know they can see 340 degrees around? Granted, this is a building I'm making, but we still need to have a view of those gorgeous eyes from as many viewing angles as possible. Early on, I didn't have a clear direction on what style I was going for. Yes, I did have a sketch, but it was more of a loose concept with no style in mind. So I took the opportunity to experiment with different styles while I was texturing the beak and the face. I knew that at least this part was going to look like an animal and less like a structure, but it gave me a chance to experiment with design elements and ideas. And you'll notice as I progress through this build how I keep trying new styles that don't really match the previous ones, yet they still kind of go together? I don't know, it's weird. After working on the face, I then jumped to the base because that was the place where I at least had some idea of what I was doing. At first, I was slapping a bunch of shapes on here, hoping that they would stick, and then realized that wasn't going to work, so I had to do it more methodically and carefully. Ugh. As they say, you can't rush art. For the longest time, I was trying to figure out what the purpose of this build is, and I can honestly say, I still have no idea what the purpose of this build is, functionally. One thing I do know is it's going to have a lot of windows, and it's going to look good. Aside from that, I really don't have any clue what I'm doing. The overall build kind of reflects a more art deco feel overall, but also resembles a steampunk style because I decided later on to introduce that style more. If I had to pinpoint a style, that's what it would be. When I was trying to come up with details for each section, I was mostly trying to consider how does this piece of architecture associate to the corresponding eagle. For example, 
On the sides of this building, you'll notice that I have these wing-like shapes. The idea here was to have these tall, thin windows that are kind of textured in a way to look like tall, skinny feathers. That was the only thing in my mind for these, so I went with my instincts. Most of the time, when I'm not sure if I like something, I keep it anyway, because I never know how it's going to look in the end. That just seems to be the way I progress through a build. I'm never quite sure how all the pieces are going to fit together or how it's all going to make sense, but I try to trust the process. Details for me are the hardest. What helped me whenever I got stuck was sketching out different ideas on top of a screenshot of my build, and that's how I figured out many of the details. Because I'm a very visual person and I need to see it before I can know if I like it. I hope it's reassuring to you that, yes, we all go through these creative blocks. I struggle with them quite a bit. This is the only way I know to kind of break through, even though it does take extra time. Even if I'm unsure if what I'm doing is going to make sense, I build on. There are also those details that jump out at you and are super obvious, like this gorgeous feather motif that I have repeated throughout the build. It's such a great way to fill in the gaps that I didn't quite know what to do with, and it ties in the whole bird theme splendidly. And they're simply gorgeous. In hindsight, I probably could have added more of these throughout, but I decided to not overdo it and kept them more special. The colors I chose do lend themselves towards a steampunk style, but I was mostly considering the colors on a bald eagle, where the body is dark brown and the head is white. Instead of using those colors solidly in one section, I had brown be a more prominent color toward the base of the build, and white be more prominent towards the top. The colors do intermingle and they can appear anywhere throughout the build, but the intention of having certain colors appear more frequently in some areas helps give the appearance of a bald eagle. One new technique that I was trying out with this build for the first time was experimenting with the Easy Edits gradient brush. I already made a tutorial all about the Easy Edits palettes and their gradient brushes, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on how it works, but basically, it's a very quick way for me to paint on a gradient using my own palette of blocks. I didn't texture everything with this, mostly just the larger flat areas that weren't really needing anything more. There were still many areas of texturing that did require more precise detailing that I would have to go in by hand and do, but it was nice to get away with using this for some areas, plus I was using it as an excuse to start learning how to use this plugin. While it appears like I'm breezing through this build, there were actually many different ideas I would wrestle with in my mind. One of the biggest ones being, how can I justify using some kind of gear mechanism within this build? I could not think of any purpose for the longest time until someone suggested, hey, why don't you rotate the head with the gears? And since that was the best suggestion I had received and I couldn't think of anything better, I raised the head ever so slightly off the body to accommodate for this now planned feature. Up until this point, I thought I was being fairly consistent with the styling, but the different styles kind of exploded when I got to the back and upper portions of the head. I wanted there to be something unique to see from every angle of this build. Especially since I knew that a lot of it was going to be symmetrical, I just wanted there to be a lot of different elements. But I also wanted there to be a cohesiveness to all of this. I found the best way to do this is to take an established style that I had done before, whether it be a window design or a wall design, and use that as the basis for a new feature on the build, just by changing it a little bit. A couple examples that you can see in the back is how I adapted two of the previous window designs into this one design. Same for this giant panel in the back that has these feather-like shapes similar to what I did on the wings. But these are not windows, they're just a decorative element. And I think that's why this build works, is because even though there's so many new things going on, I purposefully introduce these little callbacks to other parts of the build, which kind of tricks your brain into thinking that everything matches. Not that it really matters, this whole build is a visual spectacle anyway, and I can do whatever I want with it. Perhaps one of the strangest design decisions I made was adding an eagle statue on the side of the eagle head. It sounds really weird when you think about it, but I couldn't think of anything else to put here, and I just had to see if this idea was actually going to work. I will highlight later on how it proves to have been a very good decision for this build. 
I could talk about every one of these details in more depth, but to summarize, I knew for a fact that I wanted to have a giant skylight on the roof. This was a missed opportunity to turn this build into an observatory, but that thought didn't occur to me till after the roof was long completed, and I didn't feel like redoing it at that point. I added these little swirling details on the sides of some of these walls, and this was my solution to making some of these flat walls not look the same everywhere. The top of the roof was also easy to texture because I was just copying a texturing method I had done earlier on the build. I added some raised sections to the roof because I'm trying to create a feathery silhouette to the build. That was something else always in the back of my mind throughout this whole process. Now I have the majority of the designs in place, however, before I copy and flip everything on this build so far, I want to make sure the opposite side of the base of the eagle has these copper platings in place of the windows. This is here for a couple reasons. One, for variety, so it's not the same as the front, but two, it also prevents you from seeing straight through the build on the base. I didn't want a backlight to be a distraction on this lower half, so making it a solid backdrop was the best solution. Plus, it gave me an excuse to try using different copper blocks that I was avoiding up till this point, and this also helped solidify that steampunk style that I'm eventually going to add more and more of. Finally, at long last, I think we're ready for the big reveal. Just kidding, we still have more to do, but that was a good first step. There then comes the matter of these very awkward side panels that I haven't really talked about yet. What is their purpose? What function do they serve? Oh yes, they do look like giant birdhouses, very observant, but I highly doubt an eagle would actually build a nest here. Still, it's the thought that counts. Maybe by drawing a giant eagle on each panel, the eagles will know this is for them. No, no, the real reason I'm doing this is to add more clutter and more confusion to the design elements. But it is a lot of fun, isn't it, seeing how much I can get away with. Remember how earlier I said the statue was a bit much to be embedded in the side of the head? This is true, but when I flipped everything over, I realized I didn't want to have the same statue twice. Then there would hardly be any purpose in looking at this side of the build if it's going to look the same as the other side, so we need to make it different. I agonized over what to put here for what felt like hours, and probably was, until I finally relented and decided to do another statue element. This is when I also decided to really delve more into the steampunk style. Remember, up to this point, I had only done copper on that copper plating in the back, and I was kind of reluctant to add more of it. I didn't want that color to overtake the build, necessarily, but I wanted to try it here still and see if my instincts would prove correct. Which, in fact, they did. This little sculpture that I added on this side of the head turned out to be probably my favorite element of the entire build. It's so unnecessary, but fits so well at the same time. I've reached the point now where I can start thinking about the interior. The main reason I need some kind of interior for this build is because I want to feature some kind of gizmo or gear mechanisms inside of the front windows. As I stated earlier, the function of these gears will be to rotate the head, so that is step one, to build all of the mechanisms. Well before even building these gears, I was imagining how I wanted to animate this build in the end, and I wanted the gears to be large enough where they would fill up the front view inside the windows. Building the gears is the easy part, building them in a way where it kind of makes sense was a little bit trickier. These were definitely the most complex gears I've tried to build in Minecraft, but they were a lot of fun to make. Each gear is its own color to help it stand out from the others, with the intention that I would one day go back and retexture them to be a little more gritty. Funny thing is I never ended up doing that because I also liked the clean look. It helps them to visually stand out among all of the heavily textured elements. I am not an engineer, so trying to make this also look like a workable piece of machinery was difficult. I looked up lots of references and did a lot of research, and it didn't help that I had all of these pieces floating mid-air for the longest time. Normally you'd think you'd start with the structure that would be holding the gears first, but because the gear placement had to be very specific, I had to start with those first, and then work my way down to building whatever structure it is that's supporting all of this. 
The next challenge is to clean up the inside walls, which is a lot easier said than done. There always comes a time to do that one thing that you keep putting off until you finally have no other choice but to do that thing. That is this annoying stage. I never consider the interior until I get to it. I need to consider the shape of the inside walls, how windows are going to be framed, and how to build beams that look like they can support this massive rotating head. The space inside here is very limited. One thing I knew for sure I wanted was a central staircase going to the top. First, I have to figure out how many levels it will take to reach the upper floor. With that spacing, I then built one set of stairs that I would copy and flip to the remaining floors. There's a lot more involved with that process. Suffice it to say, without the Archeon Revolve tool, I would not have been able to do it nearly as easily. Even up to this point, I still don't really know what this building is supposed to be. I simply referenced a lot of industrial or factory style interiors to go along with the steampunk style. I'm actually really proud of this floor design because I love how the colors and textures turned out. By adding that to my clipboard, I can then paste the whole thing in this whole area all at once, and it looks amazing. There goes a boiler in the dead center of the room. Eventually it does get rigged up to the pistons that connect to the gears. And aside from that, there is a lot, and I mean a lot of just structural work that needs to be done. The staircase currently is a standalone structure that is not supported and will not be supported by the outside walls. Because the top spins, once you get to the top floor of the staircase, it doesn't actually attach to anything. To make it look sturdier, I added some platforms on some of the lower levels as an excuse to build better supports. The time lapse doesn't do this part justice for just how much thought and time I put into the layout of everything. I was simply trying to work within the given space and trying to make something that looked structurally sound. One saving grace of this whole process was the Easy Edits gradient brush once again coming to my rescue. I used the same gradient I used on the outside for the inside walls, but I brushed it on in a way where it didn't look like a very linear gradient, but had more texture to it. Again, I have a tutorial for how to use this gradient brush, but I discovered this way of applying a gradient and I absolutely love it now. I'm painting the gradient on in a sphere shape, and I only paint it partially before resetting the start and end point again and again and again. And by doing this multiple times in different sizes, you can get a very grungy looking texture. I was this far into the build when I decided I should figure out what scale I'm building at because I never really considered it before. The main reason I needed it now of all times is because I needed to know how wide to make a ladder. I am one of those builders who doesn't always consider scale right away. I only do it when I absolutely find the need to. I only care if it's mostly believable. I did have a scale in mind early on, but it was completely thrown off when I built that first staircase. Originally, I was expecting these inlets on the outside to turn into doorways, but when I was building the staircase in the middle, I realized very quickly that that was going to be too small of a door considering the stair size. The only options I have at this point are raising the entire build, extending those areas, but then having to redo a lot of the work I've already done, or find another place for the door. And there's really only one place I can put it. This isn't the ideal option, but it's the only choice I have without having to drastically redo something. I continue to add details and elements to this interior to make it feel more realistic or lived in. I would have added more to it if I hadn't run out of ideas, but also I felt like it didn't need too much more because of how detailed it is. 
Ultimately, the main reason for the interior being here is just to add some kind of completeness to the build. Even if it was only the walls that were completed, that would have been enough. It probably didn't even need to have all of the scaffolding and all of the staircases and all of the light fixtures. Mayhaps it didn't need those frog spawn details on the stone floor or those hanging signs on the grates. All of this stuff is just an added bonus. For the entire structure, it took about 74 hours for the exterior and roughly 40 hours for the interior. Probably more than that because there are many hours where I'm not actually recording and keeping track of my time. Regardless of how much time something takes, there's no better feeling than finishing it. And I am so glad to be done with this build. Except I'm not done with the build yet. Only the architecture part. Eh, I'll just slap some terrain together. Shouldn't be too difficult. I only have around 103 blocks left to utilize for the terrain. Thankfully, my composition requires that this building be resting on top of a mountain, so I don't really need it to go very high. This is a single mountain this build is sitting on, but I also added a few additional peaks scattered around it for the background. It's not a complicated process, but it does take time. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to terrain, so I always end up using the boulder brush for everything. I mean, you don't really need much else than that because it always turns out amazing every time I use it. I was going for very smooth rocks, yet when you paste these boulders in at different rotations, it kind of messes with the smoothness of them. So I would re-smooth the smooth rocks using either Axiom or Voxel Sniper. For fun, I was messing around with some of the other Axiom tools and came across the Elevation Brush, then randomly flattened some edges, and I ended up liking it enough where I decided to do it everywhere. I wasn't originally going for this look, but I kind of like it now. I was able to do all of my texturing using just two commands. The Angle Mask for some of the grassy areas, and then the Easy Edits Ambient Texture for everything else. I came up with my own color palette and did several tests to get the command to do what I wanted it to. And once I was satisfied with that, it was just a matter of repeating that on all of the other rocks. Next, I want to add the tops of trees to give the illusion that we are towering above them. And instead of building trees from scratch, I'm going to yoink those trees that I built for the previous build that I didn't actually end up using for the previous build, but I still had them built anyway. Yeah, those trees, we should just use those. But I only need the tops of the trees, so all I had to do was offset my schematic brush where the trees would be buried in the ground whenever I pasted them, and that works wonderfully. The only thing left to do for this landscape is to add a thick layer of fog to cover the ground and help further our illusion of towering above the clouds. This was also a simple process that still took a while because it was a rather large selection, but I just ran a few Terrigen commands using various types of glass and sometimes even white carpet. I used different noise types and tried different masks just to create a more randomized fog effect in Minecraft. It does look a little funny being built out of blocks, but it's not half bad when you combine it with the clouds from a shader. One final detail that I have been planning on adding from the beginning is a few eagles flying around this building. What would I do without this little gold man to figure out the scale of the eagles next to a human? It did help a lot for this case. It's really hard building at this scale, but considering the viewing distance you'll be seeing them from, it won't look too bad. By the way, I've been so caught up in all of the process that I completely forgot to tell you what this building is called. I've decided to call it Talon Tower just because that is the only alliterated name that I could think of that really fit it, so there you go. The build is finally finished after over 120 hours of building, but I still have more to do. Because of course we can't have a build that has a spinning head without seeing the head spin. So I went through the effort of putting it together in Blender and animating all the different gears and the head spinning. And even added some custom clouds in Blender for the animation. I'm pretty pleased with how this build turned out overall. I think if I had to improve anything, it's just not being so lazy toward the end and maybe taking greater care and adding more details to the terrain. But I'm still happy with what I've accomplished here. I like the overall composition, I like the theming of it, and I hope you all do as well. As I said at the beginning of the video, I do have more of these planned. 
and they do take me a while to produce as you can see this one's taking me a few months to build and create the video i'm looking forward to doing more of these and other types of builds in the future let's examine this build now in its full glory and may we meet again soon